Hi everyone, welcome to the AI Enthusiast. Uh, today we're going to continue on with what we were talking about last time, and that was uh, the probability distribution related to the Bayesian networks. So this is the second video, and this is the distribution we were talking about on the left-hand side. We had P of A, and the values add up to 1, so P of A equals 0 equals 0.3, and then A equals 1 equals 0 0.7. And then this right here is the conditional probability table. So CPT for short, the way we would interpret this is P of B equals 0, given A equals 0, is equal to 0.2. And then P of B equals 1, given A equals 0, is equal to 0.8. You'll notice how they add up to 1 row-wise, and that has to be true because these are probabilities. So on the right-hand side, we also talked about how this can be modeled. So let's go ahead and start drawing this out. This can be modeled with, essentially, Excuse me, my drawing utility is not the best right now. Okay, so this can be modeled with A going to B. So you'll see this means P of A times P of B given A. So in this case, we call this the parent and this is the child because the parent points to the child. If we had a third variable in this joint distribution, we would then have, like for example, if it was a C and it pointed to B, then you would have two parents of B. So we talked about this last time in the video. This video we're going to talk about how we store these values. How do you store this in code, for example, right? So one of the ways you could do this really is you could store P of A as a variable, so P underscore A, and then you could say that's equal to 0.3, and then you could do P underscore B. Uh, a, uh, sorry, excuse me, P equals, this could be 0.7, and obviously you would just do underscore zero for that. And then you could also store that the same way this table. So if we look at the code real quick, the way you'd want to do this is if we had to, this is the first approach, so approach one, and we would store this P underscore A equals zero, and we would say that that's 0 0.3, and then A equals 1, 0 0.7, and then so on and so forth. I'm actually not going to continue to write everything here because you'll notice this is just a variable of two distribution, two variables. What happens when we have like a thousand? It's just not that scalable for us to be writing every single uh, probability out there. So approach one, definitely not a good one. The second approach could be something like storing these in um, essentially dictionaries, right? So in Python, we can store things as a dictionary. So we could say P of A, and we could actually do something like zero maps to 0.7, and then one maps to 0.3. I think I got that backwards. Yeah. Zero points to, and then one should be seven. So you could do that, and then from there, I could do P of A given zero, and you'll get the value. So if I wanted to do P of B real quick, B given A, you could have a nested dictionary. So if A was zero, then you would point to another dictionary. And then if B was 0, then that would be 0.2. And then if B was 1, that would be 0.8. And then likewise, if A was 1, then you have an inner dictionary. And zero. I'm just actually going to copy this over right here. And then that would be 0.6 and 0.4. So you'll notice that these numbers are exactly the same as the one on this table. And that's obviously supposed to be the case. And then from here, we could definitely call on P of B given A. If A was 0 and then B was 0, we could print that out and you'd get 0.2. So that right here is according to the table we have over here. So this is a pretty interesting approach. It's a lot better than the first one. But um, you know, when we have to multiply these things out, let's just say I wanted to multiply, um, I wanted to multiply and get all the joint distribution. So let's actually talk about that. Okay, so I know I haven't gone into too much detail about approach one and approach two. Bottom line is they're not scalable and I can get into the details of it, but I just really want to cover approach three. 
So we're actually going to show what approach three is. Let's go here. Let's actually draw some of this stuff out. And I'm using the color, uh, let's just use purple. Why not? So over here on the right hand side, I'm interested in the probability of A comma B, the joint probability. And you'll notice that A equals one, B equals one. They're actually A equals zero, B equals zero, and then you know the other two. It's basically all possible combinations of A and B. I'm interested in calculating this distribution. And I can do that because I have this formula here on the right hand side. But is there a way to do that all in like a single computation? Or a better way of explaining it, saying that is, is there a very efficient way of storing this data and then being able to operate on it so you can calculate all possibilities at the same time? And um, I might not be doing such a good job of explaining it, but I can certainly show an example of this. So let's actually talk about that right here. The key is to represent these as vectors. So no longer are we looking at dictionaries. We're going to say that this is P of A. And then we're going to say P of B given A is right here. 0 0.2, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 0.4. All right, the key here is we're going to use vectors and matrices. We're actually going to multiply this vector by this matrix. And no, we are not going to do regular matrix multiplication because this is like a 1 by 2 and this is a 2 by 2. Yes, you can transpose this. That actually is not necessary for this computation. I just want to show a neat trick here. If I were to make this 0 0.3, 0 0.7, 0 0.3, 0 0.7, essentially make this 1 by 2 into a 2 by 2 I just copied that column over and you could see that I would just copy it as many times as I had columns in my second matrix then I can do element wise multiplication and this we call this in Python we call this right here broadcasting so basically when you multiply this by by the second value Python in NumPy in particular, it'll actually change this. Uh, it'll broadcast this value on every single column. And so you will get this effective operation. We'll code it up soon. But when you do this, what do you get? Well, on the right hand side, if I were to do all of this, so 0 0.2 times 0 0.3 is 0 0.06. Uh, did I write that? That's perfect. Then this is 0.24. This is 0.42. And then this is 0.28. Let's see if we wrote that down. Yeah, 0.2, so A equals 0. Perfect. So when I do this, 0.3 and 0.2, you'll get essentially the value that you wanted. Um, 0 0.06, 0 0.24, 0 0.7, uh, 0.42, and then 0.28. Now, why is this so useful? Because believe it or not, this right here, you just took P of A, you multiplied it by P of B given A. This right here is your P of, it's your joint distribution. So this is P of A. This is P of B given A. And then this is P of B comma A, or you could really say it's P of A comma B. It's just a joint distribution. So for example, looking at our table above here, A equals zero, B equals zero. If I were to look at the first row and the first column, I would get 0 0.06. Now, is that true? Let's find out. Um, so what we're trying to find is P of A equals zero times P of B equals zero, given that A equals zero. So A equals zero is 0.3. So we have, let's see if I can find the right tool, 0.3. Then we have essentially um, point, so B of zero given A equals zero, looking at the table it's 0.2 and you'll get surely 0.6 and let's just go over one more example so we go here we'll do p of a equals 0 again 
but we'll do p of b equals 1 given a equals 0. So we get the same value, 0.3, but then it's then point, so a equals 0, um, and then b equals 1 given a equals 0 is 0 0.8. So if we wrote, wrote, wrote that out, you will get 0.24. You'll notice that, so this was calculating a equals 0 and b equals 1. So let's see if I can write that down. And then this is a equals 0. Excuse me, that's b equals 0. And this is b equal to 1. Okay, so looking at our table, this right here is a equals 0. And this is equal to b equals 0. And you'll get a equals 0, b equals 0, point oh six. This right here is a equals 0. This is equal to b equals 0, b equals 1, excuse me. And you're going to get 0.24. So we, what we did is, we effectively made, we took this first table, and we had the second table. We multiplied them out, we got a third table, and it maintains the structure of the second table. P of B equals 0, B equals 1, A equals 0, A equals 1. And it's, instead of the conditional probability table, it's the joint probability table, and it's right here.